Do you ever feel like manifestation is just another thing on your to-do list that you don't have time for? Like your spiritual practice is something that you have to do? Honestly, you're not alone because I felt that way too. Something that's really changed my relationship with manifestation is blending it into my lifestyle so that no matter what I'm doing, I'm also manifesting. I call this manifestation as a lifestyle and it single-handedly made the entire manifestation journey more enjoyable for me and I've seen my desires show up with a lot more ease. Manifesting as a lifestyle has made manifestation go from feeling like a task to something I just naturally do because it's who I am. If you'd like to learn more about this, I've created a step-by-step guide for you. I'll link it in my show notes so you can check it out. You're listening to the Affirmation Addict Podcast with Pyle Corley. This podcast will teach you about the power of affirmations while making manifestation easy and accessible for you in order to enhance your spiritual consciousness. Thank you so much for being here. And now it's time to get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Affirmation Addict Podcast. Today, I am talking about a topic that I think has been very, very trendy on social media, and that is attachment styles. So I kept seeing content on my TikTok, on my Instagram about different attachment styles, and usually attachment styles are referring to our romantic relationships. You'll see a ton of content around anxious attachment, avoidant attachment, and how our attachment styles affect our relationships, especially our romantic relationships, um, and the triggers that we experience in different partnerships. So if you have never heard what I'm talking about, I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief overview as to what the different attachment styles are. But I was doing my own reflecting and I'm in a committed long-term relationship. So my attachment style isn't as triggered um, in my like significant with my significant other anymore. It totally used to be. And I've talked very heavily about that in other podcast episodes. However, I was thinking about in relationship to manifestation, my attachment style, which is definitely anxious attachment. My attachment style is very, very triggered um, through my manifestation journey with things that I'm manifesting. And I kind of went down this pathway of, wow, how could understanding my attachment style relate to what I'm manifesting and help my manifestation journey be a little bit easier? Because I think while we're on the manifestation journey, we can sometimes feel kind of crazy for knowing that we have a desire, but then being too scared to go get it. Or why are we constantly overthinking? Or why can't we detach? Or why why am I so detached? So we have these different patterns. And I thought a fun way to just reflect on it could be talking about our attachment styles in relationship to whatever it is we're manifesting. So it's just a fun, thought-provoking episode. I loved kind of writing down all my notes for it. I thought it was really fun. So I'm curious to see if you know your attachment style or you think you know your attachment style, um, if it resonates with you and give you some solutions on how to make your manifestation journey a little bit easier as you're calling in these desires, no matter your attachment style. So I am going to do my best to explain the attachment styles. There is technical technically four of them. Um, But there's a great book that really dives deep into it. And I think that's how these got really popular too. like this concept of attachment styles um, was through the book called attached. And I will link it in the show notes if you want to read it. It's a great read focuses more on relationships, obviously. But I do believe in the manifestation space. Everything is a relationship, our relationship to each of our desires, our relationships to other people, all of that I think has a role on what we're manifesting. So I wanted to look at the relationship between you and whatever it is that you're manifesting through the lens of your attachment style. So it's kind of an out there episode. I'm really curious to see how you like it. However, I think it's a really fun way to reprocess and shift the way you approach whatever you're manifesting, especially if it's not here just yet. Okay, so a quick recap on the four attachment styles. So the first one is an avoidant attachment style. Sometimes it's called avoidant dismissive. This attachment style, and I'm just as you know, I'm going to talk more from the lens of a manifestation, but this applies to also relationships, etc. It applies to everything. So an avoidant dismissive attachment style is when you're in a relationship with something, you can be very, very dismissive and you're very, very like self-sufficient. You pride yourself on 
I can do it myself. I can figure it out myself and I am the one in control. So when it comes to trust, when it comes to depending on someone else, maybe in the manifestation world's case, the universe, or even trusting your desire itself, that can be really hard. Um, It can feel like you don't have control. You have a really hard time letting go of that control. And it's kind of that like nonchalant feeling where you get, it's very hard for your emotions to be in tune with the manifestation process. It's very hard for your, you feel kind of unsafe expressing your heart um, and expressing honestly why you really want this. So that's the avoidant. Um, And a few things that I wrote down that might be occurring for you in the manifestation journey is that you procrastinate what you're supposed to do a lot um, because you're scared of failing, specifically fear of failure. Um, You struggle to trust the universe and you also get scared to commit. You're scared of consistency because you're almost scared of what that future version of you would look like because you're scared of that unknown. Once again, as I'm going through these, you might feel like you have elements of all of these and that's totally okay. Um, Cause I know I do, we all have different varying degrees and I think it'll vary in degree for whatever relationship you're in, whatever manifestation we're regarding to. Okay. So just a little side note. Okay. The next attachment style, this one is something that I am very familiar with because in my romantic relationships, this is me. Okay. This is the anxious attachment style. This is the person who their default mode um, when they're triggered is insecure. It is you tend to take everything personally. Um, And a huge thing with this is you have like a more obsessive nature. I also am not saying this as an insult. This is just me to a T, Um, especially old versions of me. This is me. So this is not meant to make you feel bad. Um, This is just meant to help you identify the slight differences between them because they're kind of nuanced and you might feel like you have a little bit of everything. So if you're anxious, you struggle to feel um, secure, you are constantly insecure, you feel like everything means something about you. So it's like, oh, if um, they don't text me back, they hate me. And not the fact that, oh, they might have something else going on. It's immediately there's something wrong with me. In the manifestation space, it can be like my desire didn't come. That means I'm not worthy and there's something wrong with me. Not necessarily that the desire is just taking its sweet time because it's not the perfect time, but it has to do something with you. Um, If you have an anxious attachment style, you are really good at being the chaser. You love trying to find a solution and make it work, which easily turns into chasing energy just because you're like, okay, what can I do to make this work? What can I do to prove that I am good enough? What effort can I put in? So sometimes you go overboard in the effort. This might be obsessing over manifestation rituals. This might be um, being really good at your spiritual practice, but there's an underlying tone of desperation with it. Um, Another thing that can happen if you have an anxious attachment style is you are constantly in search mode. You are like, where is it? I've done the work. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Where the heck is my desire? You're kind of doing all the right things, but there's an underlying layer and emotional nuance of um, insecurity and of lack of self-trust and self-confidence. And then another thing is just um, assigning a ton of meaning to the outside world. So if you get very, very triggered by your 3D world and your current reality and the people around you and how things are going, you might have an anxious attachment style. The next one is called disorganized or fearful avoidant. So this one is a little bit more of a mix of the two. So it's like you have a really strong desire for a relationship for that manifestation, but you're also just as scared to have it. You are scared of being vulnerable with it. You are scared to trust that process and you are scared of the success. So I think a really key difference from my interpretation between avoidant, which was that first one, and this one is I think avoidance are more scared of failure. So they'd rather not have anything to do with it at all. They're scared of, well, what if I'm not good enough? What if um, it doesn't work out the way I'm supposed to? What if I get disappointed? So you're scared of feeling that disappointment. Whereas I think the disorganized is you're scared of the success. You're like, 
What if it does happen? What does that look like? I don't know what that looks like. And that's that fear of the fear of success, fear of it could work out and you're still scared of it. Um, Disorganized can be very hot and cold. Maybe if you feel like your emotions and your energy, sometimes you are so all in in a relationship or in what you're manifesting. And then other times you're like, I could care less. This isn't for me. I'm above this. That kind of hot and cold behavior can be more of disorganized attachment style. And another thing is, is you aren't afraid to do the work, but after you do the work, you self-sabotage and keep putting yourself through old patterns. You keep putting yourself through old patterns that you know aren't helpful um, and you can't seem to get yourself out of it. You self-sabotage or you even might get the desire and you might somehow always never be satisfied or honestly unmanifest it. Not that you can unmanifest it, but you almost repel it, push it away, even though it came in. Either you just don't enjoy it enough or you can't enjoy it and you can't have fun while it's here. Um, You struggle with that. So those are the three kind of insecure attachment styles. And then the fourth attachment style, which I think we're all always working towards is a secure attachment style. So this is where you are comfortable with your desires. You are confident that you are worthy of your desires in that relationship. And you aren't afraid to express how you really feel. You aren't, ex- you aren't afraid of your emotions, even if they're not good. You're not um, making your emotions mean something about you. You just process your emotions. You are able able to balance your own nature and your own role in the manifestation process, but you're also able to trust that there is an outside force. There is the universe and the manifestation's own energy that are also at play. And you're able to trust in the unseen and you know that there's stuff happening behind the scenes for your greater good. You're able to set boundaries. You're able to kind of say, you know what, maybe this desire isn't actually for me. You're able to discern how it is that you really feel and you're not as clouded by everybody else's projections of what you should and shouldn't be doing. Um, And you feel really safe in your own energy and you feel very okay in your own presence and having your desires doesn't scare you. It empowers you and you kind of know that it's coming. It's a very secure, calm, grounded place of coming from. I always get a ton of questions in my DMs from people asking how I can manifest The truth is you can really manifest anything as long as it's for the greatest good. And if you're having trouble manifesting something right now, or you feel stuck on your journey, I have a really beautiful resource I've made for you. It's a free quiz. It's called the Manifestation Archetype Quiz. And it's something that I've created so you can find out your manifestation style to give you more clarity on your spiritual journey. After taking the quiz, you're going to receive the best resources for your specific archetype to help you attract your desires based on where you're at and what you want to create. So you can find a link to the quiz in the show notes or just head to my website at www.affirmation-addict.com. So those are the four attachment styles. And I'm really curious, just take a second and ask yourself, which attachment style do I feel like I embody in my romantic relationships? And is that the same attachment style that I think I embody in my relationship to whatever it is that I'm manifesting? So for me, as an anxious attachment, I am that girl who, if you don't text me back, I get nervous. Okay, I should say I used to. I used to get nervous or I used to get very obsessive and very clingy and kind of go a little bit crazy. Um, So that was me. And same with the manifestation journey for me, where it's like, I'm not afraid to put in the work. I'm like I put in the work and I'm so impatient. I'm like, where is that desire? And then I start creating all these stories. I'm like, well, maybe I'm not doing a good enough job. Maybe my desire doesn't want me. Maybe I'm, and I start to create all of these stories. So that is very true for me, but it might not be true for you. So think about it. Do you feel like you're in that more dismissive avoidant? You push it off because you're scared of it not working and you don't have that much emotional charge around it because you'd rather not feel anything thing um, than feel the ups and downs of manifestation at all. Because I think a lot of people who I even personally know on the manifestation journey, they're scared to feel, but they want in their relationships, they're anxious, but in the manifestation space, they're more avoidant. So see how you're feeling. Maybe you're a combination of both and you experience all of these symptoms, or maybe you're super secure when it comes to manifestation and you can only just amplify that. So 
once you have taken note of it, the kind of solution and the way to move forward in regards to manifestation specifically is first acknowledge there's nothing wrong with you if you have whatever attachment style you have. And honestly, think about it in terms of whatever it is that you're manifesting right now. Maybe you're calling in more self-love. Maybe you're calling in a very specific desire like a raise or a soulmate or something. But think about it. How do I feel in regards to this manifestation? Do I feel avoidant and dismissive? Do I feel anxious? Do I feel disorganized, kind of a combo? Or do I feel really secure? And then move forward with that note. So for me, what I do is when I am manifesting something and I'm starting to look at how do I feel along the way? Because I really think that the journey is 99% of the manifestation work. That is where the manifestation work is actually happening. Only 1% of manifestation is the outcome. I think it is so much more about the process that in between and the journey that we all want to skip and just receive our desire. But I think there's so much wisdom and learning that happens and unlearning that happens along the way that we sometimes just don't give enough time and attention to. So for me, what I really want to encourage is I want you to try and create a more secure attachment style in the process of what you are manifesting along the way, in the day-to-day, when you know your manifestation isn't here yet, but you are putting in the work and you still feel okay. Kind of like managing your vibration in your day-to-day is really what I want to help you get to. And so some things that you might notice is that you have made a decision that you want to manifest something you're doing some of the work, or maybe you're not doing the work. Um, and maybe you're avoiding doing the work, but you know, you have this desire and along the way, how are you feeling? How is that energy and how can we get that energy better? So the first step to kind of healing or, um, shifting your attachment style. I don't love the word heal because it's not a bad thing. It's a very normal thing. But the first step to kind of processing it and making this attachment style serve you better is self-awareness. You have to be willing to look at yourself, look at your patterns and notice them and say, are these patterns actually helpful for me? The second thing is managing your emotions. I think our emotions can be such a triggering thing in relationships where you get triggered and either you just don't want to feel your feelings or you feel them very heavily and make them mean everything about you. And those are normally our two extremes or a combination, of course. However, most of the time, it's one extreme or the other. You either don't feel your feelings at all, or you feel them very, very heavily, and it's normally self-inflicted. And so what I really want you to do is notice your emotions and then work with them. Some techniques to work with your emotions are EFT tapping. Um, I think EFT tapping is a really beautiful way of combining affirmations with somatic healing, meaning physical body, um, physical touching and tapping of your body on these specific meridian points. The physical tapping and the physical vibration helps you move that blocked emotion because I used to only intellectually process my emotions until I realized that our emotions are actually so much more in our body than in our minds. They're actually a physical response, not as much as a mental response. And that took me a long time to understand um, and to allow because I thought I was supposed to understand my emotions, but it's actually I'm supposed to feel them. And where do you feel them? In your body. So I think tapping is a beautiful way to start working with your emotions um, as well as any sort of nervous system regulation. I know I'm saying all the buzzwords right now, but you know all of these things, okay? Nervous system regulation could just be deep breathing. When you feel your heart start to race, take a few minutes and slow down your breath when those emotions come up and you start to spiral in your mind or you start to just completely distract yourself. Another thing you can do for nervous system regulation is just move your body, go on a walk, do a little bit of stretches, ground outside. Those are some very simple, completely free ways for you to regulate your nervous system. Or of course, going deeper into meditations and just sitting in silence, sitting in your body. Um, And another thing is just feeling your feelings. And I understand how annoying it is for me to say that because me six months ago didn't know what that meant. So I recommend if you're trying to feel your feelings and you're just starting out really trying to feel and stop intellectualizing, set aside a timer for three minutes. Okay. Nothing crazy. Three minutes, sit in a room and just say, I'm going to try to feel my feelings. 
Sorry, my phone is buzzing, not on do not disturb. I'm going to try to feel my feelings. So when you sit there and you try to feel your feelings, just notice what comes up. Your mind might scatter. Your body might kind of start itching and tingling. That's the feeling. There's no right way to do it, but just be honest and open about what it feels like to experience these emotions in regards to whatever it is you're manifesting and how you feel along the way. And then the last kind of thing I want you to start to do is once you are aware of your patterns of how you're showing up in relationship to what you're manifesting and what attachment style you have to your desire, because the solution obviously ultimately is to get into that secure attachment style where you feel comfortable and you're not dependent on your desire. However, it takes a lot to get there. And that's what detachment and everyone talks about. But it is actually noticing your patterns, noticing those limiting beliefs, and actually applying the manifestation principles, rewiring your beliefs, saying affirmations, doing all of those things for these specific patterns that you keep experiencing. That's really going to help you actually apply and manifest and shift your experience through the manifestation journey itself. And lastly, is just practicing managing your vibration day to day. This is something I talk about all the time, but instead of only looking at how you feel regarding your manifestation, maybe you're manifesting something in the career space, but how do you feel when you're eating or when you're cooking? How do you feel when you wake up? Just notice how you feel in different moments throughout your day even if it's completely unrelated and starting to try and feel just a tiny bit better or feel a little bit more grateful or a little bit more at peace throughout the different moments in your day um, is a really powerful way to start to manage your emotions, manage your energy, and overall manage your relationship with your desire. Because ultimately, like we said at the beginning, everything is a relationship and everything is fully connected. And so I hope This episode was a little bit insightful on how to really use your attachment style to your advantage to make manifestation and the process of receiving your manifestation just a little bit more easeful because feeling resentment or sorry, not resentment, feeling resistance and experiencing triggers along the manifestation journey is so normal, but we think that that's wrong. And honestly, it's only there to teach you and give you more wisdom. So once these triggers and you experience that resistance, that resistance, allow yourself to say, okay, How am I going to work through this rather than making it mean something deeper and completely just stopping? Allow yourself to work through these triggers. Allow yourself to work through that resistance and expand even deeper. And that's going to make your manifestation journey a little bit more enjoyable. And honestly, most likely bring your manifestation in sooner sooner rather than later. So I hope this episode was insightful and I hope you learned something and have a new perspective you can work with. And thank you for being here as always. I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If this episode resonated with you, it would mean the world to me if you can rate and review the podcast and share it on your social media. So I know to keep creating episodes that are inspiring you to manifest. I'm so genuinely grateful for the time we shared today. And I'd love for you to join the community by following at Affirmation Addict on Instagram. To continue diving into spirituality and manifestation, head over to my website, affirmation-addict.com. Until next time, I'm sending you so much love and so much healing energy. 